Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful to be here today, thanking God as always for this far we have come. Indeed, it has been quite a journey. You remember we have started all the way from Genesis. We came defining who the man is, who the woman is, the man as a husband, the woman as a wife. And also we said that we cannot separate the two without love. So we went through love in Colossians, um, in Corinthians, uh, Genesis, defining the mindset of God, pertaining the union of marriage, and it continued to be expounded. And I'm so grateful for this where we came. And uh, from there, we did life lessons. From the life lessons, we went to Proverbs 31. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for walking the journey as we learned together and we also had to uncover the wound that is and the reason why first and foremost this channel was started and we had to bring out the wound that has been ailing women yeah abuse from the eye of a woman and once we uncover the wound it's prudent or it's important that now we begin to heal this wound and that brings me to the title of the topic of today, Forgiveness. Uh, what do you think forgiveness is or what do I think forgiveness is? For me, um, forgiveness. Forgiveness is forgiving somebody who has erred or pardoning somebody from an error or from a mistake. Remember, this person is guilty. Guilty of whatever sin or atrocity that this person has committed. This person is guilty. But now, I need to bring in my forgiveness. I need to forgive this person, not because he doesn't deserve to be condemned or to be judged or to be executed, but because it's important to forgive. So the title of the topic today is forgiveness. And um, I will start by um, speaking from the spiritual perspective. Of forgiveness I want us to begin to understand why it's very important for us to forgive why it's very significant and very key to forgive and before I say that I would like to tell you the simplest way that helped me to forgive or made it easy for me to actually forgive how did forgiveness come to me? I strongly believe as Catherine, it's very, it's not easy. Let me say it's difficult to forgive. It is not easy to forgive. It is not easy to forgive as um, something that has been done to you that has really broken your heart or has actually destroyed your life. It is not easy to forgive something that has given you sleepless nights in tears rolling on the floor till morning. It is not easy to wake up and look at yourself in the mirror to see the injuries that you have or permanent injuries that maybe will continue being a reminder of what was done to you and you need to forgive. So I will say it is not easy. To forgive but how did I overcome this how how did it become easy for me to forgive it started very simple for me I normally say I give things that seem to look simple but very deep and very important so follow through what happened I asked God the first thing I did this is what I did I had I had this discussion with God and I told him God I don't think Catherine can forgive. I don't think I have a heart that can actually forgive and even go to another step higher of forgetting. So I said, God, 
I do not want to possess my heart. And I know from the level, the spiritual level I'm in, I know I'm created in your own image and likeness. I know I'm born of your seed, meaning that who you are is what I am. I might not feel that to the fullness or to the completeness or to the perfection of you, God. But from where I am, from where the level of my knowledge has reached, I know that I cannot forgive. I know I might say I've forgiven, I'm willing, I'm determined, and I really want to forgive even as per your guidance, as per what your scriptures have taught me. But deep within me, I feel like I cannot be able to release. I cannot be truthfully say that I have forgiven. So this is what I said, God, give me your heart. Confirm to me that I possess your heart. Because I know if I have your heart, then it will be easy to forgive. And because I know I am one with you, I really want to possess physically your heart that I may be able to forgive. So, in a nutshell, you might have thought this is a simple prayer. Because I actually didn't pray I had this discussion. I was talking to God like I am speaking to you today. Give me your heart, God, that I may be able to forgive. And immediately, I took the step of faith because for me, I believe everything, any conversation I have with God, any asking I have with God, whatever I ask God, I normally know and believe that it has been done. So from that moment on, I knew that I had the heart of God and actually I forgot. I forgot all about it. Then when it came to my remembrance, there was something that had completely changed in my life, completely, totally. Because now when it came to my remembrance, it was like God trying to to tell me hey what I, you asked I have already given you because I realized I remembered one night I woke up and I was in the middle of prayer in the in the night and this thing came so overwhelmingly in me because uh, actually when I was praying I was crying I was not crying because I was hurt or I was crying because of something bad has happened but it was just it, it was a cry that I did not understand why tears are coming out at the first place because what I was praying, or how I was praying, I was just um, concentrating and focusing more on God and what God is to me and what he's doing in my life and who he has been or who he has been, what he has been in my life. So basically what I was praying about did not warrant any tears, but it happened. So in the midst of that, that remembrance came I asked God to give me his heart. And all of a sudden, I felt within my spirit, I need now to forgive. And before I forgive, I felt I had a leading, a directive. Because how I started, I told God, God, I release my husband. I release him from all what he has done. I have forgiven him what he did. I have forgiven him what he's doing. And I have forgiven him what he shall do. And it is interesting to say, I've forgiven you your past mistakes. I've forgiven you what you're doing presently, currently, meaning you're, you're actually hurting me at this moment. But nevertheless, I have forgiven you. And I've also forgiven you what you will do tomorrow and the future. So I, you know, as, I, as these words were coming out of my mouth, it was interesting because I was not feeling any hurt. I was not feeling any pain. I was not feeling any sort of hardship within me that it is so difficult for me to forgive. Remember when I was telling God, give me your heart. I felt and I, and I knew deep within me that it was very difficult to release somebody and to forgive somebody. And another thing I knew that even if I keep on saying verbally I've forgiven you, I always remember what you have done for, to me. There are some times that he will repeat the same thing and the wound will become like 10 times more than it was a year ago. And this is actually in my case, it's a repeated thing. So you keep repeating and remember, I need to have this heart of forgiving nevertheless. So this particular night, when I released when i forgave it was actually like i forgave past present and future it is like what you do to hurt me it will never hurt me again it never wounds me i don't feel any pain i won't cry about it it, it 
it was very interesting because I realized from the night I made that prayer of forgiveness and remember how I prayed, remember the words, I have forgiven what you did, what you're doing and what you will do. I realized going forward, whatever was being done to me, meaning now even it was now in the future after my forgiving, it never used to affect me in any way. It never, yes, of course, at that present moment, so that whatever has been done might spark an anger. But there was something supernatural, for lack of a better word, because it was something strange within me that even if it did spark an anger, this anger would just like, there was something within me that was melting this anger. There was something within me that was dissolving this anger. It was like no longer a big deal. Even if in an eye of another person is a Mount Everest of a deed that has been done to me. To me, it was like chaff. It was like, it was like dust, a grain of dust. You know, it was like something very tiny. It's, it's no longer affecting me in any way. Later in life, that's when I'm sitting, I start to realize, you know, the way you sit back and like, this was done to me and actually I felt nothing. This was done to me and actually it never broke my heart like it would have done those years back. And then God took me back to the night I made the prayer. And he told me indeed, whatever you ask me, because you asked from the heart, you asked believing, you asked in faith, you asked as a choice. This was the choice I have made. I'm determined this is what I want to do. God honored. God gave me what I asked for. And now from that day, that is when I started understanding why Jesus said what he said on the cross. He was bleeding. He was in pain. Less than few, uh, like two hours before, he was being beaten. He was being spat on. He was being abused. He was being embarrassed in front of everybody. Yet, even in his pain, bleeding on the cross, the only thing he could think of saying was, Father, forgive them, for they knoweth not what they are doing. So from that day is when now I began to walk the real journey and the true meaning and definition of forgiveness. So today, I want us to talk some, I, I want you to bring you into the spiritual, my spiritual undertaking that in the journey of, um, in the journey of forgiveness, what God has taught me, what God has opened my eyes to see that actually happens in the realm of the spirit in line with forgiveness. And so we will start with um, what happens when you forgive so that now when we start taking this journey you understand why it is prudent it is significant and very important for us to forgive so let's start with forgiveness makes you free it does it doesn't set you free forgiveness makes you free from the prison of sickness judgment and condemnation what do i mean those people who harbor unforgiveness you realize unforgiveness is like um, a cancer. Unforgiveness, it's like a disease. Because, why do I call it a disease? Because those people who harbor unforgiveness, they suffer for ail from ailments. When you do not forgive, there are many diseases that somebody watching me today is suffering from and it is a physical disease with a name actually but in real sense what is the root of this disease where did this disease originate from you realize the door that you opened for this disease to get you was unforgiveness something bad was done to you by your spouse something bad was done to you let me even generalize Maybe somebody, even not your spouse, did something grievous to you. And from that day, you did not forgive. And from that day, you harbor a lot of pain, a lot of bitterness. When you cannot even stand to see or think about this person. And what has this thing been doing? It has been, it has been creating a cancer within you. It is like... A wound has just started 
to develop within you from the spiritual realm and now it is has even manifested in the physical in the name of a sickness or a disease so when i say that forgiveness make, makes you free from the prison of sickness, judgment, and condemnation. The minute you release somebody, the minute you forgive, yeah, the minute you release, I'm repeating again, and there are reasons as to why I like repeating some things sometimes. I love repeating some things because I feel an unction be, be within me to hammer it through that you may never forget number one the process that god is taking you through so god is telling you before you say or you commit that i have forgiven you need first to release you need to release so you release and then you forgive so releasing means from today you are no longer i'm no longer carrying you you are no longer in my heart neither are you in my mind i have released you and then i forgive you yeah so forgiveness so when you have not forgiven in actual sense you are in a kind of a prison you have actually confined yourself in a prison you are under a locked jail you cannot get out and it is actually you who have put you inside you have put yourself into that into that prison and you're actually closed in and you cannot get out so the moment you forgive there is this key it is like a key that you just opened and now you're forgiving when you have forgiven now this jail door breaks open or flanks open or it is even opened with a key spiritually and now you are free from the sickness you are free from the judgment the 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 the, the judgment and the condemnation you felt because sometimes even when women have been done so much evil has so much been done to them or even men evil has been so much done to them they tend to believe that i am to blame so condemnation sets in judgment sets in because even when whatever wrong has been done to you sometimes even the person who has erred who has erred tends to tell you you're the reason why so there's a lot of judgment there's a lot, a lot of condemnation and if you're not careful what have you done you have just confined yourself into a prison that you cannot get yourself out of until the day you wake up to realize that i need to release this person and i need to forgive this person and i will state a particular scripture in the bible luke chapter 6 that uh, 637 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven remember that the moment you're judging somebody the minute you are condemning somebody you're also going to be judged you're also going to be condemned if you don't you, if you don't forgive even yourself you will not be forgiven so that's why i'm saying this is a prison in itself because whatever you are doing is confining you into a prison that you will never get out you will never break out into freedom you will never break out to be released even god himself cannot release you or forgive you because you're not following the laws as the laws of of your of your of your freedom you are not following the laws of your forgiveness you are not following the laws the laws of um of of what of uh, not being judged not being condemned because even you it is not like you're not a sinner there are many things yes you, you might not have hurt this person there are many errors before god that you have errored that even god himself can decide that he he, he will condemn you or he will judge you or he will he will um he will he will he will not forgive you so god is telling you as merciful as i am as a loving god as i am as with that heart of forgiveness it doesn't matter what you've ever done this is the same heart that you should carry and remember in the union of marriage we were told it is like christ and the church so everything that christ is to the church is the same thing that the husband should be to the woman and the woman should be to the husband you see and if you are being told to have the heart of christ this is the heart that we should possess that it is easy for us to be like christ 
and and I've given you and I've given you the procedure on how to obtain that. It is as simple as it may sound, but very profound and very important. You just need to for, to to just ask God. When you feel I cannot be able to do this, but Father, you in me can. So help me do it. Like the way I said, God give me your heart that I may be able to forgive, that I may be able to release, okay? So that is where we are at. So the second one is forgiveness stops the cycle of destiny robbers, death and destruction. What do I mean? Forgiveness stops, stops the cycle. You realize, as I had said earlier, that unforgiveness, it's like you have opened a, a door and you have caged yourself. You have put yourself, you yourself, in your own prison because of lack of forgiveness. But now when you forgive because when you're in this prison you're subjected now to to the authority of the enemy it is like you have given the devil a true pass to do whatever he wants remember to start with all this because god has said i know the plans i have for you and god has clearly said they are good so remember even whatever has cost you pain it's not necessarily that it is it is not from god let's pull start from there because the plans of god for your life are good they are not evil they are not bad so whatever had been set in motion that has caused you this bitterness and anger that has made you so angry that you cannot forgive it within it there is still a plan of the enemy to capture you and then snare you and enslave you and do whatever he and go to the next step that he wants to do because anything that starts that is evil there is a there is a it is a process and there is where the enemy is trying to take you and we know it in plain words because we know it how in the character of the enemy or why the, the devil does what he does it is in the scripture and it is clear it is to it is to steal it is to kill and it is to destroy so that is why i am saying you stop the cycle of robbery death and destruction because when you shut that door where the enemy was finding having a legal right to trespass and come into your life to start in motion the cycle of robbery to start in motion the cycle of death to start in motion the, the cycle of destruction once you shut him out this cycle tends to stop forever this cycle stops actually not tends it stops that's the other reason as to why we should forgive the third one is forgiveness takes the burden of you forgiveness takes the burden of you what do i mean forgiveness takes the burden of you forgiveness um when you are relieved of a particular burden because unforgiveness it is like a load that you have been carrying and actually sometimes it can even feel physical like you have been carrying a heavy load and in most cases um when it starts manifesting physically you constantly feel tired you have like a heavy heart it's not just saying I, my heart feels heavy even physically you feel you feel sometimes like your chest is 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 heavy your chest is congested and you wonder what is really going on and the minute you forgive you wake up to realize that the heavy chest the heavy congestion has lifted you wake up to feel like i was i used to feel like i'm carrying a heavy load in my back in my neck from my neck and all of a sudden you feel that it's like something has been lifted off you and now this is physical because remember this thing is spiritual in the spiritual you have been carrying a heavy load there is consequences of carrying a heavy load without putting it down so 24/7 you have been carrying this load and now it is becoming physical that even your neck is aching truly you can tell like it's like i never i will sleep and wake up and still feel tired i will sleep and wake up and still feel my heart is heavy congested like i never rested or i never slept because you never put down this load you never put it down so it is a load of you when forgiveness comes in and it actually begins begins to manifest physically 
it begins to manifest and you can clearly even see and feel you even feel it has been lifted let's go to the next one forgiveness removes the veil off and what veil are we talking about the veil of the impossibility before i felt strongly that it is very difficult for me to forgive for me i felt it is impossible to let go what this person did to me it, it is unheard of i don't see how it can happen it is so difficult actually it is very difficult but when forgiveness comes in this veil of impossibility when it falls you begin to realize that what you thought was so difficult is now very easy you can clearly feel it is easy you sometimes sit and wonder i what what made me think that this thing is so difficult why did i not release this person from the onset i used to think that this thing is so difficult i used to think that this thing is so hard i used to think that this thing is beyond that i cannot be able to release this person but fortunately when the veil falls off because of forgiveness you realize that it was actually very easy okay it was very easy let's continue forgiveness lights up your path to see ahead and makes it easy to focus ahead into your destiny forgiveness when forgiveness steps in it is like every darkness that was was within you it is just lifted and all of a sudden there is this light shining in your path you can now see clearly you cannot be able to focus on your destiny before remember you are like stagnating stagnant before it was like you're going around in circle you are not fulfilling anything there was like something tying you down and now you can relate with what i said on uh, uh, on this on the on that on, on the number one point that you had actually caged yourself that's why you felt you, there is nothing you're pursuing there is nothing you're doing that it is that is manifesting everything is like round in circle everything is not manifesting everything is difficult now there is a light and you can see clearly you can see your path you can see your destiny you can see your crown you and you know once you have your crown you have your glory you know your destiny is fulfilled your destiny is realized in this earth and this only happens when forgiveness steps in because when forgiveness steps in now light shines in your life and now your mind becomes so clear the things that used to keep you busy and no longer they no longer bother you they no longer keep you busy now you can focus in your destiny nothing seems to keep you busy anymore nothing seems to worry you nothing seems to stop you from achieving your god given destiny or the will purpose and mission from coming to pass now the light shines let's continue and forgiveness now the other now the, the other now points um i want to show you what unforgiveness does number one unforgiveness has been withholding god's judgment against the unrepented enemies of your destiny this is something that some people may not know that the minute and actually many people don't know that the minute you still harbor unforgiveness you're actually stopping the judgment of god from the unrepentant enemies you as a person may not know a repentant enemy and unrepentant enemy and you know there are some people who will come to you and tell you they are sorry and deep within their heart they are actually ensnaring you because they they are not sorry they are actually if they are spiritually hierarchy trying to evade the judgment of god because it has caught up caught up with them and now they want to lie to you so that by your forgiving this judgment may be lifted You understand so now from the eyes of god the minute i have released you the minute i have forgiven you it is like i have lifted you and put you in god's hands it's no longer my problem it's no longer me to carry you it's no longer it, it is like god have your way it is like i'm telling god it doesn't matter what heart has been done to me it doesn't matter what this person did to me but i've just released this person to you because you created this person have your way oh lord so take over and take charge so the minute i have released and forgiven it is like i'm laying you into the hands of god and you know when i put you in the hands of god this enemy cannot be 
a, cannot be a pretender in the eyes of God because God sees the person as he is. So even if he's saying sorry and he doesn't mean it, God knows. And that's why you're, you're, be, you're being told that um, unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness withholds God's judgment to the unrepent, unrepentant enemy. Because God knows this person is unrepentant. And God has said now the time has come for you to be blessed. And he must bless you. So he, you, you are, you, if you are not, if you are unforgiving, you are stopping this. You are, you are stopping the judgment of God. Or God removing this enemy from your path so that you can achieve your destiny. The other thing that unforgiveness does, unforgiveness unleashes God's judgment. Uh, 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 forgiveness unleashes God's judgment against the unrepentant enemies of your destiny. So now God unleashes judgment because you have forgiven. Because now you have released. You have released this person. So if you have released this person, this person now. If you have released this person, now God can easily do what he needs to do. God can easily now begin to do what he intended to do on this unrepentant, unrepentant enemy. Because it's only God who knows who is repentant and who is not. You from your eyes, you'll assume that you might know whoever is repentant or not repentant. But now in real sense, God knows the truth about this person. God knows the truth. So the minute you have forgiven, you have released and forgiven this person. Now you have released them into the hands of God. Now God can deal righteously with your enemies. So this is what unforgiveness does. And this is also what forgiveness does. And there is much more of what happens in the realm of the spirit when forgiveness comes on board. But I needed to mention those, the, the, the few of those ones. And now I would want to read some few scriptures in line with forgiveness. And we will start with Daniel 9.9. 9. To the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. You see why I was telling you, it is interesting because sometimes when the spirit of God leads you, you later come to find what he has told you in his scriptures. Because remember, God doesn't mean his words. Everything that God tells you physically, he, you will definitely find it in his word. So Daniel is telling us, to the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him. So mercy and forgiveness belongs to our God. And remember that I was telling God. Because this forgiveness belongs to you. It is only you who can enable me to forgive. And that is why now in my own thinking that time when I woke up to pray. God led me to say give me your heart. Because what was I asking you? Uh, what was I asking God? I was asking God to give me his heart of forgiveness because forgiveness belongs to him. I cannot forgive if I don't have God's forgiveness within myself. So to me, it was a heart of forgiveness. And that is why I asked God, give me your heart that I may be able to forgive because I need your heart in this matter. My heart cannot, but your heart in me can. You see? So let's go to Luke 23, 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they knoweth not what they do. And I stop there. It's a continuous because they, it's saying, and they parted his raiment, uh, raiment and cast lots. So we are just saying, Father, forgive them. You know, I had said earlier of what I came. Now I came to understand that scripture fully. To know what was the mind of God. It was easy for God to, for Jesus to forgive. Regardless of the pain. Regardless of the shame. Regardless of him now knowing he's some few minutes from death. You know? And still within his heart. He did not feel any bitterness. He did not feel any anger. The only thing he felt was mercy towards these people. And that is why he was saying, Father, forgive them, for they know what, not what they are doing. So when you reach this level of having the heart of God of forgiveness, you actually don't feel anger and bitterness towards your enemies anymore. You feel mercy. You feel sorry for them. 
because sometimes they do not see the true picture of the repercussions of what they are doing and that is why jesus was saying forgive them for they know what not they are doing so we go to isaiah 1 18 come now and let us reason together say the lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as snow though they are red as crimson they shall be as wool remember look here it is not the sinner going to repent it is not the sinner and i needed to bring this scripture out it is not the sinner going to asking for forgiveness no it is god we have erred before god we are the sinners we have sinned against god but now god is coming to the sinner and telling them come let us reason together though your sins they, though your sins are red as scarlet they shall be white as snow though the, if they are red as, as as red as crimson they shall be as wool you see it doesn't matter how dark or whatever evil you have done to me god is telling you that don't wait for this person to come and ask and say sorry don't wait for this person the day he will wake up and say sorry for what i have done no it is take up upon yourself this person is unrepentant and i will tell you this person will go a notch higher he will not stop doing what he has been doing to you you're not forgiving because this person has asked for forgiveness you're not forgiving because this person is repentant sometimes this person is even continuing to hurt you or repeat the same thing he did to hurt you but now it is you who is taking the step of forgiving this person regardless whether he's repentant or not it is now you doing it for you doing it in line with what is correct what is good what you you believe from your heart that this is needful so i am not forgiving them i'm not forgiving you because you have asked me to forgive you i'm not forgiving you because i can see you're repentant i'm not forgiving you because you have stopped doing what you are doing to hurt me but i am forgiving you before you even ask and that's why you're seeing in the scripture of isaiah he's saying Come and let us reason together. Yes, you have erred before me. You have sinned before me. But it is him taking the initiative to go to the sinner. Then the next uh, scripture I would want us to read is Micah. Micah 7, 18 and 19. Who is like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy he will turn again and he will have compassion upon us he will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast and thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea what does that mean that whatever sin that this person has done to you just as god does it Remember, in the union of marriage, again, I repeat, it is like Christ and the church. See what God is doing to the church. He will take the sins and cast them into the depth of the sea. Meaning what? Somewhere that it can never resurface again. In the depth of the depth, it will never be brought up again. You will never see it or hear it again. So this is the forgiveness of God towards the church. This is the forgiveness of a husband to a wife, of a wife to a husband. That when you have erred, this is the, the forgiveness that you need to have. Yeah? He retaineth not his anger forever. That even if you're angry, you do not retain that anger forever. That anger has to subside. This anger, you have to forget this anger. You have to. This anger has to come to an end. It doesn't matter what has been done to you. You cannot keep that anger forever. God doesn't hold anger forever to you. So should you never hold your anger to the one who has erred, to the one who has sinned. And in this case, we are talking about in the union of marriage between the husband and the wife, between a man and a woman so do not keep the anger and then when you forgive it is like you have cast it into the depth of the sea meaning 
in the depth of the sea you have buried it it will never be resurrected again